I've gone through well over 1,500 of the almost 2,000 free typefaces currently on Adobe Fonts, so you don't have to. Let's look at my favorites and how you can use them to get you started quick with a little bit of font inspiration. Fontspiration. Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining me. It was nice of you. I'm Grant M. Fletcher, been in the motion design and video creation game for well over a decade, mainly focusing on tool visuals, but you better believe I've had my fair share of title sequences and lyric videos and social ads. Uh, a recent example of my work heavy on type is the Black Friday 2020 campaign for Ezra Cohen, in which I both supplied a lot of the content for the LED and also cut the main ad and teaser. The two questions I ask myself for this is, do I use this typeface a lot already, or do I really want to use this typeface in the future? Because I work in motion design and often have a lot going on on screen, I usually lean towards bolder sans serif fonts, but I also try to include examples from a broad variety of categories. And we'll start with sans serif, then we'll move on to serif, and we'll finish off with a few more kind of interesting novelty kind of selections. Now these fonts are absolutely free with an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, and you can access them within your chosen Adobe application or from the Adobe Creative Cloud app, or just by logging in via the website, link down below. So two side notes before we begin. One, about terms. Uh, some say what you see is called a typeface and the file itself is a font. So the typeface is to a font what a song is to an mp3. Others use typeface to mean font family and font to mean the specific weight and size. These days I wouldn't be too bothered about it so I'm going to use them pretty interchangeably. Number two, a serif is those small lines or strokes you'll see in fonts such as Times New Roman. Sans serif simply means without serifs. So some typography sources refer to sans serif typefaces as grotesque or gothic and serif typefaces as Roman. So you'll see those in a few of the font names as well. Let's kick things off with one of my top five most used fonts of this season. Nimbus came to my attention via a panic search when Font Bureau pulled their fonts from the Adobe collection. Uh, I used to use titling Gothic for almost everything. So this is a decent alternative. Comment below if Adobe giving us no warning really ticked you off too. I've used Nimbus for a few Ezra Cohen projects too, including the updated version of Kinetics. Again, link in bio. Now Eurostyle was designed back in the early 60s, but to me it evokes late 70s and 80s sci-fi and synth design. Uh, in motion design I often think of text as a shape, so I adore the extended black version in all caps. It gives off a simple bold rectangle, making it a real ease to design with. Now another of my absolute most used fonts is Dharma Gothic X Bold. I adore a tall, heavy typeface, and again, this makes for some really usable rectangles that can be stacked, and it's great for impact, especially on a vertical screen like a phone. So sticking with height, we have Presio, specifically uh, number 25 black X compressed or number 35 black compressed. I use this extensively for the Seeing Sounds Black Friday sale, and I especially take note of those S's. They remind me of the uh, Superman S we all used to draw in our notepads at school. Before we get to the last serif font, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like, and why not subscribe, hit the bell icon so we can do this again sometime soon. Uh, I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay, all good, let's keep going. To the obliques, gotta work out those obliques. I've chosen abolition for a college style hard corner look and vinyl for a much softer vintage edge. Now both are worth checking out, but I don't tend to use italics a lot in my work. Um, they're a lot harder to work with in motion design. Hopefully uh, you're just better than me. Now if you need some body text or a byline or just something less in your face, Try Brandon Grotesque or Pressacav. Am I saying that right? I don't know. Uh, both have their specific strengths and applications, and it's important to note that your font choice should be dictated by the project rather than just shoving your favorite font into everything. 
like I tend to do. Last but not least, for my sans serif choices, we get Rock Grotesque and Antarctican. Headline, ultra bold. These have a little bit of flavor, so they should absolutely be used with caution. Rock is the most extended font here, and Antarctican is a bold font that doesn't go too tall or slim. Okay, bonus font. Before we get to the serifs, I thought I'd share a paid font. Yes, everything else so far has been free, but if you or your boss have some coin to spare, here is one font family I'd splash it on right now. So move over, titling gothic, see you later, druck wide, peace out, micro, grammar. There's a new lady in town. Cinder block, baby, you're looking so good. Cinder block. Ooh. Ah, yeah. Cinder block. Moving right along. Now, I don't use serif fonts quite as often as they require more white space or a less busy composition for the most part, but Moray, Ivy Presto, and Orpheus are all beautiful. With a serif, I'll go sentence case more often than I will with a sans serif, but out of these three, Orpheus is my favorite in caps. There are so many small nuances in the serif choices in Adobe font, so if you don't want to go on your own deep dive, Ivy Presto is a classic choice for almost any project. For something with a little more gusto, we go to Gastromond Regular. So we're blending the Renaissance stylings of the Garamond types with the Victorian outlandishness of the fat faces. Yes, I did read that online somewhere. So this turn of the century look is very artistic and organic and just looks less digital, but not necessarily outdated. Uh, New Spirit has the lowercase n that looks like it's leaning with some attitude. All right, so jumping in a time machine of fonts, I've picked five specialty typefaces, including soap. And I know what you're thinking. Isn't that just Cooper Black? Wait, what are you thinking? Were you thinking that? No, it's very close though. Less aggressive serifs, flatter bases, and the obvious mixing of upper and lowercase glyphs. It's just a little bit of 70s era fun. Now stepping back to the psychedelic 60s, we have Ekman Psych. And I know what you're thinking, what the even goodness of what now? But why not have a play once in a while? Obviously way less legible, but sometimes I just want to make the audience work for it a little bit. As with quite a few of the fonts on this list, this is an updated take on an early 20th century font. What I love about Bookman the most is the extra glyphs um, allow you to really blend a whole word together. It looks great in, in a 70s style. If you need a pre-distressed font, then look no further, because Thunderhouse has got you covered. I mean, just the name alone tells you that Thunderhouse means business. Don't, don't mess with Thunderhouse. I have saved something extra special for last. Freaking love a good black letter, and this one is the knees of bees. It's both gangster and regal and festive and metal, all at the same time. Exquisite. Well, there you have it, 20 fonts for 2021. I hope you gained some font inspiration and are excited to kick some designs directly in the face hole. If you have a designer friend, why not send this their way to become an instant hero? Comment below with your favorite font at the moment so we can all benefit. And as a change of gear, it, it'd be remiss of me not to mention that Jesus loves you. Yes, even you, you're not the exception. Love ya. This mustache too much? I had a beard last week. Keep it or we'll get rid of it. Comment below.